Yeah, I mean, I've always been really fascinated throughout my career writing books um, with the, the possibility of software um, to, to help us uh, un understand material more deeply, to learn, um, to do research, to, uh, you know, help us organize ideas, um, you know, which is which is wonderful for a writer like like me, but also obviously incredibly important in an educational context, both for teachers and for students. Uh, and so I've used a bunch of you know software tools over the years. I, I kind of notoriously kept this quote collection from books that I'd read, you know, using the Kindle and a wonderful service called Readwise. So I have this something like eight thousand quotes from books that has just been like on my hard drive for all these years, like twenty years of my reading history. And uh, and so when you know the kind of the language model revolution really started to hit. Um, uh, a couple of years ago, actually before um, ChatGPT came out, um, some folks at Google Labs reached out. They knew my work, they knew my obsessions with tools for thought, um, and they said, "Hey, you know, we can finally build this thing that you've been dreaming of your whole life um, in in a way that was just unthinkable just a couple of years ago. Now that we have these language models, and they said, why don't you come and be involved and and have a writer." You know, in the room from the very beginning of uh, of the process of building a tool, and what we really wanted to build was um, a, t a tool that was, a, you know, a, an application that was built from the ground up, knowing that there was going to be a language model at the core of it. And so, throwing out a lot of our assumptions about how software is supposed to work, and like, what would what would you do if you started from scratch, knowing that there was always going to be this fascinating new form of artificial intelligence, and and how would you build a a tool to help you research and think and organizing your ideas and understand material and that's that's what notebook lm has become yeah i love that idea of putting because it's for writers it's for those who research that they reached out to you and put you at the center and uh in my work with with ai and education uh, educators are really kind of concerned that the the educators put at the center of like a tool's being made yeah. for for education i think it's so important that it's we don't just get this this tech tool made in Silicon Valley, and then we're trying to wedge it into what we 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 know works. But actually, from the ground up, it's it's made with that in mind. You know, and you can see this. Um, so one of the core fundamental principles of Notebook LM, which I'm sure you'll get into in this webinar, is this idea of what we call source grounding, which is to say you you define a set of sources that are relevant to your project. Um, they could be your quotes that you've collected over the years. They could be the, the syllabus for your class, the reading, the assigned reading for a class. It could be articles you've put together, or your corporate documents, whatever it is. And you open up a notebook and you create, um, you upload these sources and say, this is, this is what I want the model to be grounded in when I'm asking questions, I want them to refer to these documents. I want them. To, I want you to summarize these documents. I want you to draw your, you know, the, your summaries or your answers from the, the ground truth of these documents. And that was like, that was there at the like the very first feature we ever built was answer this question based on these documents and show what um, you know, what passage from the original source um, you use to answer the question and. That was just a like that was kind of a, a very unusual idea in early twenty or mid twenty twenty two. It's become a little bit more common now, but because Notebook was built with that from the from the ground up, like we really have, we now have this very advanced citation system, which is a very like writerly, scholarly, academic kind of concept. But in a world where you have, you know, language models you know, at risk of hallucination and all these problems, when you can cite everything, when you can see what the original source material is, is, is saying, it really makes a huge difference. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you know, when we initially started talking about it, it sounded very nerdy that you would have all this kind of bibliographic information, but it actually turns out to be very useful for, for even people outside of academia and education. Yeah, absolutely. And I and I, one of the other concerns, actually, that I get quite a bit when working with educators is, well, where's the information coming from? Uh, how how can we trust the information? And I suppose by putting the users' um, sources, the users' content at the heart of that, then it, I suppose it builds that confidence that it's coming from, it's coming from the knowledge that they can trust. Yeah, and and we've been very um, strict about it. So. You know, perhaps to a fault, I think like you can't really do anything with Notebook LM until you upload sources. So people are used to, you know, the Gemini or ChatGPT model where you can just start chatting and it'll answer. 
we, you know, we limit that. And if you upload a bunch of sources about, say, you know, uh, British history, and then you ask a question about Taylor Swift, it will say, hey, I'm sorry, the documents don't say anything about Taylor Swift. Um, and so they're kind of guardrails, which also make it really valuable in an academic context. So you can say to your students, you can use Notebook LM with this reading for this class, and you'll be able to ask questions and learn and explore and get explanations based on the particular reading for the class, but you'll have to stay within that zone of expertise or information while you use the software. Yeah, and I, lo I love that kind of how the facilitation of innovation as well, I think, especially because of large language models and the capabilities of AI, a lot of, a lot of schools, colleges, universities are really trying to kind of excel their in, their innovation at the moment, and yeah. and um, and I suppose a big part of innovation has been able to to connect um, lots of information, lots of inspiration as well. And I know there's been a big trend over recent years of uh, PKM, personal knowledge management. Yeah. Of I guess like what you were saying, collecting those quotes from books. But actually, then what do you do with them? And and we've seen other tools, haven't we, start to come out that is trying to address this issue of well. Is there something out there that can connect this information for you and, and give you new ideas and help you innovate? And is that is that one of the hopes for Notebook LM? Oh, hundred percent. I mean, it's it's amazing at that. Um, so one thing that you can do, for instance, we we have a kind of slightly obscure feature, um, but if you've got a, a collection of sources, like say I've got my reading notes, so seven thousand quotes. You know, most people don't have that many quotes, but like whatever it is, you've got some collection of like things that are important to you that you read in the past and that probably uh, are not immediately accessible to you in your memory because it's hard to remember everything you read. So you put those in a notebook, and then you can write, you know, jot down some ideas in a note because you can just create your own note and write in there. And then if you select that note, um, one of the options you'll see is suggest related ideas, and so mm -hmm. it will take the passage you've just written and then go through all the attached selected sources and it will say, oh, you know, you just wrote this thing about ant colonies and that actually relates to this other thing about, you know, collective intelligence and also this other thing that was written about evolutionary psychology and this other thing and will, you know, give you a set of references. So being able to make those um, associations uh, is, is, you know, have the, have the computer help you make those creative leaps is, that's just astonishing that it can do that. And, and it, it does it really, really well, particularly. And, and the important thing, Dan, is that the intelligence there is, yes, it's it's Gemini, which is the model that underlies Notebook LM, but it's also the intelligence of the person writing the original paragraph and the intelligence of all the sources that you've uploaded and your curating of those sources. So it's, it's not just you're like handing everything over to the AI and saying, hey, you think for me. Um, it's saying, okay, we're gonna be in this collaborative mode where you know, you're know, you able AI to scan through all these documents. I'm gonna suggest things. I'm gonna create an interesting collection of documents. And it, it's just a new way of kind of thinking in, in partnership with the, with software. Yeah, I like that. I was, as you can imagine, I've been playing with it for, for the last few weeks. And I like how it just doesn't, I suppose if you know you use ChatGPT and you're like, right, write an essay for me on this subject yeah. and it'll do it within 10 seconds. I like how I like how it doesn't do that in a way. What it'll do is it'll it'll almost bring together all of the, the quotations and the source material that you then have to take away and and use. Um, yeah. And I think, to be honest, I think that's what people who are doing research, students, educators, that's what they want. I think there's a lot of a lot of those people who, and again, I talk to them every day, that feel a bit disheartened that this thing wants to do the work for you. Um, but actually, if if there's a tool there, like like we see in Notebook LM, that can just help you with that that information gathering where you can trust it, I think that's, that's so, so important. One of the ways that I've started talking about it, um, and it took me a while to kind of get to this, actually, um, is that on some level, Notebook LM is a tool that's optimized for helping you understand material. Um, and and sometimes you understand things by having a conversation, like it's there's a chat interface where you can ask questions. Sometimes you can kind of write down your own notes. Sometimes you can, you can read the original sources inside of Notebook LM and you can get help understanding them. There are a lot of different modalities there, but you know, we have tools that help us, you know, edit our photos and we have tools that help us like, you know, do spreadsheets. This is a tool for understanding on some level and, and I don't know. We haven't had a lot of software in that mode to date, in part because we didn't have 
AI at this level of sophistication, and now, now you know this is this is possible. Which obviously, a tool for understanding is useful in a lot of different places. But boy, does it really sing in in the classroom environment because um, so much of what you're trying to do is like learn and understand complex material. Yeah, and and tell us. Uh... Tell us about the updates because you um, you yep. you got in contact, didn't you? And said that there was there's some major updates coming. Yeah, we yeah they're they're live actually. Um, you know the fact that we're having this uh, discussion with so many people around the world um, is is probably the, the related to the biggest update, which is that we are now as of just ten days ago or so um, live in two hundred countries and territories around the world. Um, and uh, we fully natively support 38 languages. And uh, I, you know, I actually haven't even realized quite how advanced this feature is, but like, for instance, we're seeing all these users in Japan, like Japan is like our largest market uh, outside of uh, the United States. And one big use is, you know, um, people will upload documents in English that have been written in English and just have a chat with the model about them entirely in Japanese. Okay. And so it's completely fluent. It will go back and forth between any of the supported 38 languages. You can just kind of like, you, you can have, you know, the, the document can be in French. You could be talking in Spanish about it. It's all, so that's, so that's a big thing. So we're available with, you know, very multilingual. Um, we now, uh, we up the, uh, the number of sources that you can have per notebook to 50 sources per notebook. And each, each source can be, um, uh, 500,000 words long. So you can effectively be talking to like 25 million words worth of, uh, <laughs> of content in a single notebook, um, which hopefully will be enough for most people. Yeah, um, you'd hope so, would you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we, added, so we added support for Google Slides, including images um, and images and docs. So there's true image understanding. So you can upload a bunch of images in slides and ask if, it, if it's like a chart. Um, you can say, you can ask questions about the chart and it will understand visually what the chart signifies and it will, you know, translate that into text for you. Um, it, like you can upload handwritten documents or old scans of text that haven't been OCR'd and it will understand, I mean, it's astonishing that stuff. Um, sorry, my uh, headphone just fell out. Um, we, uh, we also made a serious improvement to the citation system that we talked about before. So. Now, when you get an answer from the model, you see these inline citations at each kind of fact that the model uh, reports. And those citations say, okay, this, this sentence or this paragraph is supported by this particular passage or these passages and these sources. And you can hover over those citations to see the original passage, or you can click on them and that takes you directly to the source material. It's an incredible way to explore, uh, you know, a complex material. Uh, and then kind of the the other feature we're really excited about is now um, when you first upload your sources, you get a notebook guide. And that's a, a way of, I'm sure you'll show some of this in, in the talk, but that basically gives you a kind of a high level overview of all the sources you've uploaded. And you can create these kind of pre-formatted guides. Um, uh, there, there's one, an FAQ, so you can take all your sources and generate a frequently asked question document or a timeline with a cast of characters. Most important for the education market, there's there's a study guide, um, a, a guide, and that basically gives you a, a set of um, short answer questions with an answer key, um, like 10 questions, and then the answers to the questions, uh, suggested five long form essay questions that you, that doesn't have the answer to them, although you could ask the model those questions and they will give you the answer. Um, and then a glossary of key terms. Um, so you just, you upload a bunch of things, you hit study guide and bloop, there you go. You gotta wait for like 30 seconds and then you'll get this like exhaustive like summary uh, with with uh, with the uh, quizzes and all this kind of amazing stuff. So uh, there's some other features, but those are, those are the big ones. Um, and, you know, I really hope uh, people will get to check yeah. it out. That's cool, and and I'm right in thinking it's it, it's using the the latest version of Gemini Pro. Yeah, yeah, we up that that we upgraded um, in early or in kind of mid May, um, so it's using Gemini Pro 1.5, uh, which was a major leap forward for us. I mean that this model is so good and um, so so creative, like your ability to to um, so so one of the things that 
you do a lot in Notebook LM that maybe you can talk about is you, you can select individual sources that you uploaded or you can select your notes. And what you're doing at that point is you're kind of focusing the model's attention on those particular documents. You can talk to all your documents or you can talk to all your notes. Um, it's hard to talk to them both at the same time, by the way, but we're working on that. Uh, uh, but sometimes you're just like, hey, I like for instance, the other day I was working on a, a new set of features that, and I have a bunch of notes about these new features. And I was wanting to kind of make it clear to the team, like how those features would play out, like once we launch them. And so I just selected the notes that I had about the new features, just those notes. And I said, draft a press release announcing these new features, like include quotes from the team and stuff like that. And it just, created this like mock press release, looking at the features as I described them and understanding a little bit about how Notebook LM works. And it just created this amazing document like in, in 15 seconds because I was able to like focus on that specific like set of notes. Um, so that's that's another key thing that that is genuinely new. Like we've never had to kind of focus AI on different objects or material before, but now, now you can do it in Notebook LM. Yeah. That's uh, and th there'll be a lot of people who are watching now who maybe work in a school they use google uh workspace for education um and i know google workspace i think just re recently announced was it yesterday or the day before that it would be allowing gemini for, for teenagers within within like a, an education domain is there any i know you probably you probably can't talk about this or you might but is there any plan because i know this is still kind of an ex, in an experimental stage but is there any plan to to integrate that with workspace for education in the future or or have you even got to that point of thinking about it yet yeah we we i mean there's we love all the education folks but both classroom and workspace and they've been you know, we've been talking with them from the very beginning of this project ben gomes who runs all that stuff is it has always been a great advocate for this project um we really, we really want to do a big push into education. Um, we're kind of trying to figure out like what the best way to do that is given the uh, existing Google platforms. Um, so nothing to announce there other than that, like something will be coming for sure. We don't quite know yeah. yet what it is, honestly. Um, <laughs> in fact, I didn't know that about uh, Gemini. Oh, yeah, so, so everything's happening so fast. So that's news to me, Dan. That's good. That I'm glad to hear it. Because actually a big thing is right now, um, notebook is 18 plus yeah. um and so uh you know we definitely are we think it has fantastic you know high school e use um for sure and so we would we would definitely be interested in trying to figure out how to let younger people into it um and the last thing i'd say is um and i'm sure you'll cover this too you know it's a wonderful tool for students but for educators too i mean just like you know upload your syllabus and then you know, brainstorm ideas for assignments. Um, you know, I've done a bunch of tests where I've uploaded a bunch of things and I've been like, okay, create a uh, three week project based learning syllabus based on this material, suggest specific activities. And, you know, and it's just, it's a great kind of generator of first drafts of things. Then you can go in and fix it or revise it. And, you know, but you get, you know, kind of ideas um, based on your sources so quickly. It's, it's very powerful that way. Amazing. Uh, uh, thank you so much for your time. I know you've, you're, a, you're a busy man and you've got a busy day ahead, but thanks for getting into the offices early for us and really cool that you're joining us from uh, Google HQ as well. Um, so thank you so much, Stephen. Well, thanks for the support, Dan. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can come back when we have some more features and you can do another Absolutely. one of these. <laughs> yeah, All right. Thank you. Take care. Have a good okay. day. Bye.